संडे क्लास बेसे गीताजी चौथा अध्याय डिबेट भाग लीधो तो हाँ अत्य विचार कर चौथा अध्याय पार्ट लीधा पी कीधु विचार कर आप शुरुआत लीए गीता पेहलो अध्याय विषाद योग अर्जुन विषाद योग अमे बदाय साथ मड़ी ने वाँचो दरक छोकरा एक एक श्लोक लीधो एट नौ छोकराओ है एवं रीते पार्टिशिपेट कर संपूर्ण कर अर्जुन विषाद योग में जे भी आ लोग ने क्वेश्चन आया गीताजी दृष्टिकोण आकेंड अध्याय पर जता पहला इवन पे अध्याय थोड़क बेकग्राउंड आपी ने सैकेंड अध्याय सांख्य योग थोड़क जरा डिफिकल्ट भी है एट द सेम टाइम इंटरेस्टिंग विश्लेषण स्टडी सो सीरियली now the place of geeta is unique in our religion not because it was preached by krishna at the battle field when arjun was in dilemma to follow the religion or not to follow the duty but first of all as krishna himself says that imam vivasvate yogam proktavan aham avyayam vivasvan manave pra manuriksha koy bravi so this has been the knowledge age old knowledge and i am recounting it recollecting it so though it is not said in our granthas but in ramanu sampradaya it is said that there are 32 vidyas in upanishadas and all those 32 vidyas as compiled in geeta in the not the same context but the context of rather human context so therefore it is said that sarvopanishado gavo dogdha gopala nandana partha vas sudhir bhokta dugdham geeta amritam rag so it is a gist of all the 32 vidyas preached in the upanishad and that's the greatest significance of the gita uh, many people consider it because it is it was taught it was preached at the time of battlefield and when arjun was in dilemma that is human situation and that is human significance and we may also consider gita when we are in some we are in some dynamic situation but that is superficial according to me 
the prime importance significance of the gita is that it is it, it compiles the whole upanishadic knowledge with the the then contemporary context <laughs> And that's the greatest significance of Gita. And that's why Gita is also considered to be an Upanishad. Though it is not in the language of the Upanishad, the language is different. Uh, there are two types of languages, Vedic language and the uh, Laukic Vasha. So Gita is in the Laukic Vasha, not the Vedic language. So what? Content is same. First point. <clears throat> Second point. What is the basic teachings of Gita? And everybody, every commentator or the reader of the Gita may like to take it. in the context and in the purpose, fulfilling purpose of his own choice. So, I would say there is a portrait of the Sayaji Rao in Baroda Museum. So, you can see from anywhere, any direction, the Sayaji Rao looks at you only. <laughs> The same is true with the Gita also. You look from the any angle and Gita will... I have some Buddha face also here. Let me show you. That will make more point clarify. Yeah. Please, enlarge the screen. No, no. नहीं हो रहा दिख रहा है लेकिन आप हमारे यहाँ नहीं वाकु यहाँ है बोलो कोई यही दिखे जगह सुनो दिखे ये दिखे तो कौन नहीं यहाँ मुको बड़ा स्क्रीन कर दो ना तो मुको दिख तुम ठीक रहेगा दिखा है या स्क्रीन को छोटा करके परफेक्ट है या स्क्रीन को बड़ा करो हमें जेजे ना नाम नहीं सामे पिन करो कम तू जेजे स्क्रीन अने पिन इट अप पिन नो ऑप्शन आउट से जेजे नो नाम लग क्यों चाहे ये वीडियो नहीं पर नाउ लुक एट दिस फेस ऑफ बुद्धा See it from anywhere. <laughs> Buddha appears to appears looking towards you only. This way. Such is the mood of Gita. <laughs> you look it from any angle. And Gita will sound to you as if Gita is talking with you. That's a unique character of the Gita that we must first of all understand. Now, beside this, there is a metaphor also in the Gita, an Upanishadic metaphor, where it is said, Dva Suparana Sayuja Sakhayau Samanam Vriksham Parishashwa Jate Tayoreka Pippalam Swadu Atti Anashtnan Anyo Abhichakashiti. Two birds are sitting on the same branch of the tree. 
one bird eating the fruits that grows over that branch and other is simply watching how it eats why it eats or why not it eats so the sakshi paramatma and karta jeev now this is a metaphor reached in upanishad here in gita particularly gita goes little deeper into the meaning of this and how so sakshi means witness so we have two sorts of consciousness one active consciousness and one witness consciousness in modern psychology you may consider this as id and ego in freudian psychology id is an active consciousness active mind and ego is a passive consciousness it simply manages the different forces of the uh, super ego and the id the conflict that arises between super ego and id this is so simple we when when we want to act there are some inhibitions of super ego we can do this we cannot do that like and so forth it is a very powerful strong uh, energetic force within us which compels us to do something so there require someone to balance the the two forces and the sakshi chetana the witness consciousness balances it now this was the meaning of the metaphor and this can be the modern interpretation freudian interpretation of the those old metaphor but as far as the gita is concerned gita goes little deeper into the it and gita wants to proclaim that there is a hidden witness in every active consciousness and there is a hidden active consciousness in every witness consciousness in pushtamargi terminology mahaprabhu vallabhacharya would translate guda stri bhav and guda pum bhav that's all right in a different context but tentatively it means same a uh, very superficial meaning wise there is a hidden female in every male and there is a hidden male in every female not in the question matter of the gender but in the matter or in the context and matter of the like every student as a hidden teacher and every teacher has a hidden student in it in him or her that how is goes so gita goes little bit deeper into this sense of the division of the active and i would not say passive but the witness because passive would have been the normal interpretation but in every passive witness there is a hidden activity and in any in an every activity there is a hidden passivity also that we can see from our sense organ and motor organ also when you are using your sense organ like eye ear etc so and so forth some activity is going on and when you are i doing something for instance taking a mobile into hand this simply does not mean action but it simply it also means the cognition also that you are taking mobile into hand 
because if you do not feel the mobile in your hand if you are do not if you cannot become aware of the taking mobile into an hand then the action would be meaningless so every action involves some weakness and every weakness involves some action and that that is the main thrust of the gita and for this reason gita talks in a manner for instance as i said active and the witness consciousness so i may extend it to the listener and the talker witness so every talker witness is listening also if he cannot listen he cannot talk properly and any listener if he cannot talk if not extrovertly at least introvertly the talk is going on when you are listening you might be talking when you are listening me you are you might be talking with yourself how far me sham goswami is right or wrong some may find right some may find wrong some may find doubtful so this talk is constantly going on even when we are listening or when we are talking we are listening something without listening we cannot talk so there is a hidden talker in the listener and there is a hidden listener in the talker everywhere this is a common principle which mahaprabhu ji emphasize to a great extent in all the context and the situations in the situation of bhakti in the situation of the and <laughs> perhaps if we little more extended this concept there was an american criminal whose name was chessman he has written a very nice book the killed was killer the killed was killer so in every killer there is a killed person and every killed person there is a killer person also hidden <laughs> we cannot deny it. if you read that chess carol chessman you will find the the justification of this stand what mahaprabhu ji has said 500 years back so there is a prakata pum bhav and prakata stri bhav and gud pum bhav and gud stri bhav gud talker and the prakat talker hidden talker and the avert talker and the hidden listener and the avert listener on that ground krishna says to arjuna that you are within me and i am within you and don't be under wrong impression that you are only within me and i am only within you everything is within me and i am in everything so when everything is within me and if i am in everything that makes a lot of difference the real assessment of the divine hood and that's the main thrust of the gita that you may find from first to the last canto of the gita in nutshell i would describe the significance of gita in this manner now coming to the sankhya and yoga the second chapter of the gita actually arjuna vishad yoga first first chapter is the arjun vishad yog normally we have a wrong impression that something is in somebody is in vishad he is not in the mood of the listening when child 
is just adamantly crying, a child would not listen. The parents' guideline. When student is adamantly quest asking question, many times I have seen the student do not listen what the teacher is teaching. <laughs> because they, <laughs> they become so addictive to raise question. This is a normal case. Apparent case. But never forget that even when you are adamantly asking some question, inconsistently asking a question, even at that time somebody is talking within you. And the person who is listening you is not simply listening, he is also talking within himself. So Vishad takes the Arjuna to the Avishad Krishna, Avishadi Krishna. And Krishna says, I take your records. I seek your succor. Please guide me what to do, what not to do. I am in dilemma. Now what the dilemma is? The dilemma is of the nature and the sense of duty, commitment to the duty. Normally, people are of opinion that the battle was between the Kaurav and Pandav. That's a superficial symptom. Battle is not between Kaurav and Pandav. The real battle is between the nature and the self-awareness. Nature vis a -vis self-awareness. Nature is all around in objective environment in which one is, one is, one acts as a knower, doer, and receiver. But the self-awareness can never be self-awareness bereft of the environment. An individual is not an individual when he is out of society. An individual is individual in society only. Though we may not be aware of this, our situation, because our so many times our individuality is so much hyphen that we forget our social character. But be absolutely clear in your mind that in every individual there is a hidden society. And all the societies have a hidden individuals. Without individuals, there cannot be society. Society is a conglomeration of the individual. So, when we say that you, Arjun was in dilemma, so the main dilemma was not of the Kaurav and Pandav, but of the Swabhav, nature and the self-awareness. What is nature? Nature is unlearned process of our life. We do not have to learn how to take breath, how to see, how to listen, how to talk, how to walk, how to sleep, how to be awakened. That is unlearned our drive. And then there are some drives within us that we have to learn. For instance, there is an appetite and there is an hunger. Hunger is an unlearned drive. An appetite is always a learned drive. That you will not eat dhokla. Or you will not, if you are South Indian, you will not eat the chapati, but you will eat idli only, dosa only. If you are North Indian, you will not eat chapati or bread, but chapati only. Or if you are European, you will not re eat puris, but you would like to eat the bread. These are all learned behavior, not unlearned behavior. They do not come by default, but they, we learn it in, our, in the society where family or society in which we live. 
that makes the con conflict in every consciousness. When you are angry, you want to abuse the person upon whom you are angry. And society says, yes, you can abuse, but you should use such words which are not unsocial. If you use the unsocial words, then you are at fault. Now, where that inhibition comes and why this conflict happens between the nature and the learned behavior. So, Swabhav and Swadharma are in conflict with each other. There is a Swabhav of Arjun who drags him to the battlefield and there is a learnt understanding of the Arjun that I should not kill my elderly person. I may not survive if the, all these my relatives are died. These are all learned behavior. Now, how the how Krishna manages this? So the this role is transferred. Normally, it is said that Jivatma is a doer and Paramatma is a witness consciousness. Here, Bhagavan Krishna reveals himself within himself. You are under wrong impression, my friend. You are, have to be witness and you have to allow me to act as I am doer. The doer supreme. And if you think that you are doer, then it is your narrow perspective. That is a thread line which starts from the first chapter of the Gita to the last chapter of the Gita. And for this, Krishna takes the Sankhya, Yoga, Bhakti, Sanyas, Vairagya, different methods of the uh, self-upliftment. These were all self-upliftment's method. And he wants to convey or convince the Garjun that you take any method, adopt any method, but this thread line must not be broken. This is Gita. Do you have any question pertaining to this, my explanation, introductory explanation? Unmute and uh, ask question. Um, yes, JJ, I have a question. So, yeah. and I, um, the... do, do, do you follow me? Did yes. you follow me? Yes. Thank you. I'm yes. so glad. Um, you said that the war wasn't between Pandavas and Kauravas, but it was the like the nature versus like and the self-realization. So in, in the war, um, the, we had like two different sides. We had like one that was um like like doing a dharma and one against dharma. So how does that connect to nature and self-realization? Now, I, as I told you, Swabhav brought Arjuna to the battlefield because he wanted to take revenge uh, for the injustice they have suffered from the side of the Kauravas. And then after looking at the all those candidates, with whom he had to fight. So suddenly he, there, there was idea pop in, pop up in his mind that as per my self-awareness, it doesn't look like it, my duty to kill all those kids and kings just for the sake of the some meaningless gain, say kingdom. 
So that's how conflict occurred in the mind of the Arjuna. Okay. Thank Am you. Yes, yes. Any more? Clarity? Ajaja, I have a question. So, um, like throughout like the first adhyay, we see that um uh or like uh calls Shri Krishna as like Janardhan or Madhav. So like these are all the names for Shri Krishna. So if did he have like this real like like on this understanding that this is Shri Krishna uh, before me or was he like unaware of that but like because he is calling Shri Krishna these names like Janardhan means like the remover of Avidya. So like these names show that he does have some kind of understanding of who Shri Krishna is. So like what brought him to have all these doubts when Shri Krishna was standing right before him? Can you sing? Any song? Say the poetry that you have learned in your school. Can you? Uh, yeah. I sing. Sing for me. I don't. I don't have anything at the top of my mind. No, no. Any any song. Any song will do. That would be Bollywood song or hippie song or jazz song or any song or kirtan. Uh, can I say the Mangla Charan? Acha, but don't recite Mangla Charan. Sing Mangla Charan. Chinta Santana Hanta. No, this is your reciting. <laughs> I want you to sing. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Are Baba, sing any, <laughs> any, any notation. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Is there any companion beside you who can sing? <laughs> My dad. Acha, ask him <laughs> to guide you in for singing some song at say poetry of kindergarten. Uh, happy birthday to you. All right. Yes. Fine. Fine. Uh, sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to someone. Happy birthday to you. To you. Now you know the notes, all the notes correctly. Do you know which note you have used? By under understanding wise? No. By your voice, you can produce the song note. Happy birthday to you. But which note you are using? You don't know. So when you are using name, we know the notes. But we don't know which notes. Am I clear? So, Jaja, are you saying basically... He was saying the names, but he didn't know the... Now, for, for instance, let me tell you. Let me clarify. You might be knowing somebody in that part of the world as Robert or Bob or Julie or Joanna. Do you know the meaning? So when you use the name, you know who is named by this name, for whom you should use this name. But that does not necessarily mean that you know the meaning. Let me tell you a history. I am not 100% sure about it. But an American has told me. Then normally the names 
which nowadays in usage is in English, like Anderson, or Peterson, or Goldstone, all those sons were bastard previously, because they were not the son of their own father, but they were son of Peter, so Peterson. And in that way, the name came into currency. Oh. Now everybody use it. Johnson. So that was an abusement originally, not the name. Because he was not the son of his father, but he was son of John. So there was Johnson. Now, in spite of staying there, growing there in USA, perhaps you are not aware of this phenomena. <laughs> Such thing happens. So many times we use the name Madhav, Keshav, and we know what Madhav means, what Keshav means. But we are not sure why it happens so, why he is called so. That we are not sure. Perhaps the best example would be God. Do you know what God is? God means, or you don't know. You know what God means. Why God is called God? If I may ask. People give funny and extravagant explanation. G means the generator, O means operator, D means literal. There's a foolish explanation of God. Utter foolish explanation. In English word, God does not mean this. God word is a not short term of the <laughs> Generator, operator, and destroyer. Originally, from the point of linguistic point of view, God is a Sanskrit word for hutam. That hutam becomes ghutam, and ghutam becomes go goth, and goth becomes germ in German. In English, it becomes God. So, Hutam means to for whom we give our offering. For whom we, we give our offering. So, that's the meaning of God. You may use the term. For us, Krishna is God. For Christian, Christ may be God. For Mohammedan, Allah may be God. Can't you use? Can't you explain this? Without knowing, it's like a currency. You are never sure who has introduced this currency. Let me give you a funny example. In the, th in the 300 years back, there was a Persian invader in India, Nadir Shah. He came, he looted India terribly. But he stayed here for looting at least six months. So to have a day-to-day -day requirement fulfilled, he introduced his, his own coins. So Nadir Shai coins I have in my collection. He went back to Persia. But after the 200 years of Nadir Shah going back to Persia, the coins were in usage. <laughs> Such thing happens. And words are like this. Once they are coined, they may went on being used by people. They fully know the meaning, value of the denominational value of the currency. But without knowing who issued it, why issued it, when issued it. Such thing happens with all the Janardhan, Madhav, and all. And for that reason, commentators always interpret the meaning also, which might have been said in the same mood of using coin. 
so then, Am I clear? Then, yeah, so then would those interpretations not necessarily reflect what Arjun, like, uh, was that not intentional then by like the different names Arjun used at different times for Krishna? Would that be not intentional until he knows who Krishna is? Does that make sense? I have seen a movie made by Satyajit Rai. It's a very beautiful movie. Where, where there is a person who is a smuggler, but he pretend to be a very gentleman. And when once he is caught, the person who caught him says, Shabas Indian. Because he was proud of being Indian. Now that Indian does not mean the Indian. But that's an abusive Indian term. Shabash, Indian. Because you proclaim to be Indian and you are smuggling in India. So Shabash means Bravo. Bravo, Indian. Now this Bravo also doesn't mean Bravo. It's a sarcastic remark. So Indian as well as Bravo, both are the sarcastic term used by the character. Shabash Indian. So meaning can acquire so many, a word can term can acquire so many meanings at a time when they come into currency of the use. Not necessarily. But when a speaker is uttering some word, if we are conscious listener, then we should get into the inquiry of the meaning also of the term. Therefore, different commentators interpret Madhav, Rishikesh, Gurakesh, and so and so forth name. That what could what it could hide and what it could reveal as a meaning. Am I clear? Yes, I think that makes sense. I think the only question I was asking is if because we were saying earlier that Arjun doesn't fully under at this point in the Gita, Arjun doesn't fully understand the meaning of the words he's like the names he's using for Krishna, right? Is that is did I understand that correctly? Is that what you were saying? Um, like with the kind of the song example where we were singing, but we didn't know the notes. Like we call people names. We What's your know. name? Paranshu. Paranshu. Are you sure of its meaning? I think so. <laughs> Please tell me. Explain. I've been told that it means uh, ray of of the supreme. What? Ray, ray of the supreme or of Bhagwan okay. of, of Paramatma. Anshu and Para Para Anshu. Anshu means rays. Mm -hmm. Par means supreme rays. Mm -hmm. Now, listen. Do you consider yourself supreme rays? No. Or even rays. Forget about the supreme. Mm -hmm. Still it is your name. Mm -hmm. You know by this Paranshu name yourself. And I would also know you by this name, Paranshu. Mm -hmm. But in some context, if I want to praise you, if I feel that you have understood my point, I would rather say, oh, you are the real Paranshu. <laughs> At that time, I did not mean you as a person, but I mean Paranshu means the supreme race. His name, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that reveals the knowledge. That makes sense. Such is the case with all the names. <laughs> yes, that makes sense. That makes sense.
every fruit has a skin and within the skin every fruit is to and an eatable stuff but we know the fruit by skin not by the eatable stuff so we know the person by word not by the person <laughs> I know you now as a Paranshu. That's your skin. Am I clear? Next. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. So now, turn by turn, uh, please ask your questions that you already you have already raised all questions in a document. Okay. So okay. Please, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> ये समझ में आई ना बात नाम की हाँ <laughs> हर नाम जो है वो हर एक के लिए वापरे जाए वो निश्चित तया वापरे जाए तो बाकी जो डिटेल है संस्कृत में या के लिए एक शब्द है नाम शब्द और शब्द को प्रवृत्ति निमित्त वाको प्रवृत्ति निमित्त क्या है why this term was came into usage and what the meaning means the current meaning it acquired. Yes, God ka matlab foolishly some creator or some ruler aisa ho gyo, divine ruler or divine creator. Actually, pravrti nimit wo nahi hai, pravrti nata to whom we offer. Gutam. Gutam, Gutam, Goth, and God, etymologically, ऐसे सारे शब्द चले हैं। हाँ। Actually, this question, uh, whoever raised the questions देखे. in life, maybe they can ask, जे जे, directly. They'll ask me. जे. हाँ, so judge doesn't have to read it. मैं मेरे को यहाँ लिखे बाय तो मैं पढ़ सकूँगा. Okay, ठीक है. No problem. <laughs> Given the both Dhritarashtra and Sanjay overheard conversation between Krishna and Arjun, what was their perspective? Our understanding about Krishna was saying, where were they unable to do so because they were not bhakta? What about when Krishna reveals his Virat Swarup? Did they understand Krishna as the Supreme Lord? Let me give you one my example. I don't believe in astrology. Fortunately or unfortunately. But there was a professor in university who was much famous for his astrological prediction. So we were sitting together. And then naturally the discussion started about the astrology. So it suddenly came from my mouth that I don't have much faith or liking for the astrology. And he challenged me that I can prove by 100% accurate prediction and what is there astrologically your life chart. And he was a professor of chemistry, let me tell you. Guide to the many scholars. And I told him one, even if you predict 100% accurate, I would, I would consider that as my foolishness, but I am not ready to admit the truth of astrology. Then he said, I am helpless. It's all right. 
So even if Bhagwan has revealed Virat Swarup, there could have been some like Sam Goswami who would say that even if you have revealed Virat, <laughs> I consider this as a my folly, not your greatness, that you look like Virat. And this not only happened when Krishna revealed his Virat to Yashodaji, Yashodaji was never ready to admit that it was the greatness of Krishna, but he considered as a bhut badha. And he asked the pandit to make some treatment of Krishna so that such bhut, the demons, will no know, will know more appear in the mouth of Krishna. So ultimately, simply by revealing truth, is not necessary necessitates that one must admit. If we have a temperament of not admitting, even truth, revealed truth it becomes the as useless as unrevealed truth. So, some temperament is required to accept the truth. It is not simply the truth which, which works. There is a coordination between temperament and the truth. Am I clear? So, Dhritarashtra, Dhritva, Dhritarashtra was not in the temperament because in one of the stanza it is said, Mulam Raja Dhritarashtra Manishi, Mulam Krishna Brahmacha Brahmanascha. The main cause of the fight between the Kauravas and Pandavas were not Kaurav Pandavas, they were merely pawns. But the chess player was Dhritarashtra and Dhrita Brahmanda Krishna. One was proud of being holding the Rashtra, who is a blind force. <laughs> One who was holder of the universe was not blind for the conscious force. And they, they were fighting with each other. All others are merely pawns for their fight. <laughs> Mulam Raja Dhritarashtra Manishi, Mulam Krishna. So the original fight was between Dhritarashtra and Dhrita Brahmanda Krishna. And you, we know this very well. That even when the Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, broke the pillar and Narsimha came, he jumped to kill him. He wasn't afraid. Otherwise, if we break a pillar and something appears all of a sudden with such horrible feature, half lion and half man, we will not have a courage to fight with such phenomena. But Hiranyakashipu has a spirit to fight. So he jumped like a great warrior to fight with Hiranyakashipu. So the revelation of truth is not sufficient. Temperament is also required. Hiranyakashipu was in the temperament of fighting. So truth was not, will not suffice to him. And Krishna's Virat Rupa will not suffice to Dhritarashtra. Krishna's Virat is suffice to the Arjuna because he was in temperament to listen. Because he asked Krishna, may I see that truth? And Krishna said, yes, it is possible for you, but you cannot see with your own eye. I have to give you divine eye to see that Virat Sam. So the temperament is required. Did Arjuna know before Bhagavan revealed Virat Swarup? Yes, yes, very well. What Arjuna says, please listen. 
బిఫోర్ విరాట్ పరం బ్రహ్మ పరం ధామ పవిత్రం పరమం భవాన్ యు ఆర్ సుప్రీం బ్రహ్మన్ యు ఆర్ ద సుప్రీం అబోర్డ్ యు ఆర్ ద మోస్ట్ పాయస్ పురుషం శాశ్వతం యు ఆర్ ఇటర్నల్ పర్సన్ దివ్యం డివైన్ ఆదిదేవ్ అజం అన్బోర్న్ విభూ ఓమ్ని ప్రెజెంట్ ఆస్వామ్ ఋషయ సర్వే దేవర్షి నారద స్థత on this point all the rushis contemporary rushis are in agreement unanimously and even devarti narad says so asito devalo vyasa asit deval and vyas these are all vedic rushis they also proclaim you to be the such swayam chaiva bravishyame even you yourself boasting that you are para brahma sarvam etadritam manne i believe this is a truth but i want to see this do i believe but i want to see this i want to visualize this i want to realize this so would you show me that and then krishna showed virat but arjun did know before the virat darshan whom he was asking why did krishna ask arjun to perform worship and puja before the war started to the other devtas and devis for your information krishna always worship used to worship shiva in this house because that's the beauty of our incarnation even ram worship the rameshwar shiva krishna worship shiva and if you go to kailash you will find shiva worship krishna so that's a perhaps not the criminal sense but in the sweet sense a notorious mischief of the parents no father can tell is children that follow me mother can only say follow your father no mother can say to tell your children follow me father can only guide the children follow your mother so that's a mischievous notorious agreement between them to <laughs> control and manage the children <laughs> so krishna worship shiva and shiva worship krishna control these children <laughs> so no problem so if he may ask arjun to worship other deities one should not be <laughs> afraid of why he asks because that is how the world goes well i can never say tell you that worship me i require someone to tell you the worship sham baba that's why goswami keeps samadhanis <laughs> now it is not is in practice but 50 or 60 years back no goswami would go anywhere without samadhani because samadhani would only sell tell you that what you have to do with goswami and goswami would remain quiet smiling face that's how the world goes arjun ne godakesh nidra indriyo ne vijeta naam kem apvama aavyo teni paachal ni vaartha shu che i am not 100% sure i will have to check and tell you i know lakshman ji would not sleep but i am not pretty sure why arjun was called gudakesh i will have to check and tell you lok tran ma arjun kahe che potana saga bhai ne marva magto nahi karan ke mainsya sarva bhutani koi pan jeev ne marsho nahi jo ke shri krishna arjun ne ladva mate prosay kahe che karan ke teno dharm che jo apne evi paristhiti no samno karvo pade ke jya 
આપણે ચોક્કસપણે સમજી ચોક્કસપણે સમજી શકતા નથી શકતા નથી કે કયો ધર્મ અને કયો અધર્મ તરફ લઈ જશે તો આપણે નિર્ણય કેવી રીતે કરવું ખાસ કરીને કારણ કે આ શ્રી કૃષ્ણ નો અવતાર કાલ છે નહી અવતાર કાલ નથી નથી જે જે આનું ટ્રાન્સલેશન કર્યું છે ઇંગ્લિશ માં ક્વેશ્ચન છે ખાલી એક ટ્રાન્સલેટ માટે રાખ્યું છે અનવતાર કાલ એ એનું ગુગલ ટ્રાન્સલેટ એ કદાચ કર્યું હશે અનવતાર કાલ જ છે એટલે અનવતાર કાલમાં કૃષ્ણના અનવતાર કાલમાં ધર્મ પરહેપ્સ ઓલ ઓવર ઇન ધી વર્લ્ડ and in every institution where there is no teacher there are monitor where there is doctor is not available sisters are available residents <laughs> junior doctors are available so it is always said in the scripture that in absence of the incarnation of god we can seek the guideline from our gurus because acharya chaitya vapusha sagatim vedakti so in absence of guy gurus also mahaprabhu ji has come forward and tell read the scripture yourself and that was the main reason of the conflict between protestant and catholic because when catholics started misusing their power of teacherhood protestant in germany they protested that we will not rely on you we will rely on the bible itself for seeking our guideline because when you give guideline you are giving polluted guideline which benefits you not benefit to the christ and we want to be faithful to christ so what christ has said in the bible because originally bible was in latin in catholic section of the christian so they translated bible and at that time much dispute happened that the translated bible can be treated as bible or not and there was a much fight and much disagreement and the much debate but then ultimately it was revealed that the original bible was neither in latin nor in the vernacular language of europe but it was in assyrian language which nobody knew even pope did not know <laughs> see the fiasco of the <laughs> such <laughs> and that's why <laughs> vaman there there is a commentator of geeta vaman he beautifully expresses this he says that sanskrit vani deve keli tar prakrit kay chora pasuni jhali असा तू वृथा बोलीस काय काज आता संस्कृतात किंवा प्राकृतात ज्या भाषा झाली हरी कथा तोच तत्व तोच तत्वता मानली अँड देर फॉर इन द फर्स्ट टाइम अवर सेक्ट पुष्टीमार्ग इंट्रोड्यूस द मंत्र इन प्लेस ऑफ मंत्र द कीर्तनास विश्वर संगीन वृज भाषा otherwise please be clear that to perform a puja without mantra is null and void it does not 
because according to shastras god is mantratmak so the puja or archana of god should also be mantratmak only so when you do not use mantra god ceases to be god it becomes statue and puja ceases to be puja it becomes only throwing of some flower or stuff or this or that that was the original maryada concept pushtimark said no no our god is not mantratmak our god is bhavatmak our krishna is sentimental i have a sentiment for krishna so my krishna is a sentimental so there are two types of relation one social relation and one sentimental relation like that father mother brother sister these are all social relation whether you have sentiment or you do not have they are father they are mother they are sister they are brother but the relation of the friend is not a social relation it's a sentimental relation and since it was said in bhav vedas samanasina atma jananam the worshipable god is not the objective god but the god which resides in your mind samanasina atma jananam and on that ground mahaprabhu says that our god is sentimental god so if we have a sentiment of worship we are we do not bother about the mantras because our god is not mantratmak um i have a question yes please so you were saying that like the the relationship that we have with god is like a sentimental relationship which is like similar to a friend but a lot please, of the time slowly i am not accustomed to american <laughs> accent <laughs> um uh you said that the relationship we have with god is is sentimental that our pokemon is is sentimental but a lot of the times people say that when you think of your relationship with pokemon like sometimes people think of it as like uh a sibling or as a son or like a mother or father and then there's also the idea of the relationship being a friend but if our god is sentimental and the relationship we have with like our family is social then why is it also well i think it's the relationship you have with your family can be social and sentimental but on the name face the relationship you listen, have listen listen with... <laughs> anything or any person with which you have a sentimental relation it's not that that it ceases to be objective then it has its own objectivity and because it has an objectivity it does not mean that it is strictly confined to the objectivity only you can interact with sentimental also so it has a both in every sent it is like a tao yin yang in every objectivity there is a sentiment and in every sentiment there is an objectivity hidden understood yeah that makes sense thank you thank you i'm glad you are asking so many questions now next question is 6 uh, number 6 huh number 6 number 6 going off the previous question if when krishna comes down to earth again perhaps in the form of kalki any are devoted to do something or give some advice that goes against the vedas or laws and we have as a truth does his 
Does his word trump all? There is a proverb in English. Respect cannot be demanded. Respect is to be commanded. So if there is a God and if there is an incarnation of God, he will not demand, he will command. And if I am demanding, that's a sufficient proof that I am making a mockery of God. You know when terribly be Napoleon was busy on the battlefield and continuously fighting throughout his life. So one of the soldiers, a few groups of the soldiers decided to murder the Napoleon. And suddenly they went on the battlefield when Napoleon was sleeping without any arm, without any weapon with him, beside him. So when they went to kill him, suddenly Napoleon got up and said, why you come so to my camp? Get up. He was without weapon. And all the soldiers came to shoot him with the weapon. But he, he had such a commanding power over the soldier. Soldiers went. They could not kill. Even commanders sometimes have such commanding force. If God comes, he has a demand. So question does not arise that who will, will whether he will follow Ved or does not follow Ved. Because Ved is also his commandment. And there is a very beautiful book in Judaism. Where the scholar, Juda Judaic scholar says, that God gives us commandment. And we are commanded by it. God does not subjugate it by it because he's commander. He never undergoes the subjugation of his own commandment. So Vedas are the rules for us as commandment given by Brahman. But God himself does not subjugate it to it. So he can all the time break it or follow it. He is sweet with. So isn't um that the what the Gita is about that um Arjun is doubting his uh morals and he's asking Krishna if it's okay to go against his morals and Krishna is saying that yes if it's for dharma you can go against your morals. Suppose Krishna is incarnated before, reveals himself before you. Immediately now. And he commands you to do something such which you do not like. What would be your take? Would you follow Krishna or not? Um, I would be skeptical at first, yeah. And that's what Krishna says. I give you liberty. I have taught you. Now you think yourself. If you are convinced, act as I guide you. If you are not convinced, do not act as I guide you. Same will be done by you also. If you are convinced, you will be guided by. You will control your action. Many times doctor says, teacher says something. You have to do this, you have to do that. 
If we are convinced and if we are convenient, we follow it. If we are not convenient, there is a proverb in Hindi. Kshama baden ko chahiye, choten ko utpaat. It is always the virtue of the elderly people to pardon. And it is always the guts of the younger people to go against their commandment. But you require guts for it. Everybody can't do that. Whom you are asking, referring? Hmm? Are you referring something? No, I was just um, discussing with my dad. So then that would mean that Arjun did not fully know his true form because if he knew that Krishna was... Because Arjun form, was devotee. Okay. Devotee, so he took it, he took the commandment to his heart. But if Arjun would not have been devotee, he would not, he would never take. I understand. So this, this whole, the whole Gita then is kind of that an example of like just how Haley said she would first be skeptical, like how we would all be first skeptical if Krishna came down and told us to do something that we didn't initially agree with. And then the whole Gita is then Krishna. So and then to follow that. commandment, it's not a one-way traffic, it's a two-way traffic. The commander and the commanded person. Many times, you know, army revolts against the commander. With such a great training and the discipline, of course. Army revolts against. You know, the lions and tigers and the, all those creatures. Many times they revolt against the ringmaster. And eat the ringmaster. Without taking their instruction. So it's a momentary sentiment where you are, where you decide whether to follow or obey or disobey the commandment. If simply by issuing com commandment, somebody would follow, then there would be no real sin at all. Because every religion has given some commandments. You know, do not kill commandment was taken. Do not kill among yourself, kill others. That's how people take. So it's up to the person how he takes the commandment. That's why Mahaprabhuji says that there, is, there are three states of mind, sattvic mind, rajas mind, and tamas mind. If there is a sattvic mind, it takes the commandment to do its true sense. Rajas mind takes it skeptically. And tamas mind listens the command and don't bother about it. As I told my friend, professor, who said that I can give you 100% accurate prediction, and I was in absolutely Thomas mood, so I said, I would consider that my folly, not the truth of the astrology, because I am very adamant about this, my judgment, that astrology is a false. So even if someone gives the 100% accurate Prediction, I, I, I am not ready to as, admit it as a. First of all, because I do not believe in the destiny. Predictable destiny. Though I believe in destiny, but predictable destiny, I don't believe. So I don't require, I don't feel any requirement to 
be guided or misguided by astrology. That's my temperament. Yes. There was my cousin. We used to play chess. And many times it so happened, I would have given him checkmate. And I said loudly, oh, checkmate too. He said, I don't agree. <laughs> Get lost. Are Baba, I have given you checkmate. He would say, no, I don't agree with you. How to, how to convince? I cannot thrash him. Because we were brothers. <laughs> So if he was defeated, he would say, I would know, I don't agree with you. How will you make me convince that I am defeated? I said, no, there is no way. I can only show you the checkmate on the chessboard. But he would say, no, I don't agree with you. All right. Such thing happens. Uh, JJ, I also had a question. Yes. Let me deal mm -hmm. at sixth, seventh one. Yeah, after that. Since Arjun refers to refers to Shri Krishna as a Janardhan, I think I have dealt with this. Janardhan. Yes, I think you already answered this question earlier. Yes, that I have dealt already. Then eighth question is Arjun mentions. The concept of Varanashram saying if he fights the battle against the Kauravas, their dynasty will collapse and they will fall into irreligious. Sinful habits. Why does he tell Krishna this when he's already aware? They are in the wrong and other side. First of all, the beauty of Mahabharat, it's a unique epic in the world. Because all the characters of the Mahabharat are not idealistic. They are realistic. Really? Means as if Sir is a criminal, he is not ideally criminal. If there is a virtuous person, he is not ideally virtuous person. He is a realistic person. So some hodgepodge of the virtue and some hodgepodge of the crime. As Yudhishthir was Dharmaraj and he was very fond of the all such activities which were not supposed to be done by the ruler. Arjun was very valor fighter but he became shaky when he has to face the so like that, all the person, Bhishma was a great devotee of Krishna. Because when somebody inquired with the Krishna, what is your reality? And Krishna said, I don't know, Ask, please ask Bhishma. And even Pandava did not know the reality of Krishna, which Bhishma knew. And he was fighting with Krishna. So the all the characters of the Mahabharat are not idealistic. They are realistic. Means both have plus and minus side, black and white side. So my, I don't think that this question has any ground to be answered. <laughs> Because even Arjun is afraid.
and when please consider this point that when he has killed all the Kauravas, they are not going to be the criminal. The public is going to be criminal in absence of the ruler. This is what Arjun tries to convey. And Krishna is also trying to convey Arjun or convince Arjun by saying, Hatova prapsase sargam jitva va bhokshase mai. If you die in battlefield, you will go directly to heaven. If you lose the battle, then you will get infame, bad fame. Or if you win, you will you will be the ruler of the or area all area. So these are all practical reasons with their plus and minus. You cannot uh, make a watertight compartment of black and white that crime is crime and virtue is virtue. Sin is sin and virtue is virtue. Every person, there is some hodgepodge of sin and virtue both. Actually, in every person, there are germs and virus and the bacteria and health also. Sometimes bacteria, virus grows more than we become ill. Sometimes health becomes strong. Then bacteria become dominated by the, our health. They become silent. Such is the case. Right or wrong? Any more question? Actually, JJ, I have put it down three more questions after uh, giving. Uh, Manish, by you have it? Yeah, and I also had a question, JJ. Shall we okay. stop here? Deal with this question, the other question afterwards sometime. Sure, sure. Uh, Panaj, you want to ask the last question? Yeah. Um, I mean, if he, if there's time. But Just it, last okay. question, yeah. And then we'll stop, yeah. It oh, is in yeah. context with that, right? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you to all. Okay. Okay, Jaji. Ah, Jaji, done well, Thank you so much inquiry into the true meaning of the Gita and purport of the Gita. JJ, thank you for coming to giving... I really day. enjoy, I really enjoy having this conversation with you. JJ, Danwar Pranam from everybody. Ashur. Ashur. Danwar Pranam, JJ. Danwar Pranam. Danwar Pranam, JJ. Danwar Pranam, JJ. Danwar Pranam.